Organising an inexpensive hop-on, hop-off bus tour of London is easy. Simply use an acceptable form of contactless payment, such as an Oyster card or travel card. Ride on public transport and take advantage of this video guide. The route is a continuous circuit which takes about 3 or 4 hours to complete, depending on traffic conditions. The walking distance between each bus involved is never more than 100 metres. Find additional information in the description below this video. Hop on bus 159 in Whitehall, just a few metres on the left along from Parliament Square. The stop is close to both Westminster River Bus Pier and Underground Station. The route heads towards the cenotaph designed by Edwin Lutyens and built in 1920 due to public sentiment following the First World War. It then passes the railings and police guard in Downing Street, where number 10 is the official residence of the Prime Minister. To the right, the three statues on the grass by the Ministry of Defence building are of Viscount Bernard Montgomery, Viscount Allenbrook and Viscount Slim, predictably all military leaders. Earl Haig, another military leader, is mounted in the centre of the road slightly before the banqueting house, outside which King Charles I was beheaded in 1649. Then almost directly opposite, the popular horse guards are on duty almost every day. The next equestrian statue in the middle of the road is of Queen Victoria's cousin, the Duke of Cambridge. Whitehall was named after Whitehall Palace, where England's kings and queens lived until it burned down in 1698. All that remains is the banqueting house, with its painted ceiling by famous Flemish artist Rubens. Straight ahead, the column in Trafalgar Square is stopped by a statue of Admiral Nelson. The statue on horseback at the entrance to the square is of King Charles I before he was beheaded. It's the place where all distances to and from London are measured. On the far side, the Dome National Gallery is one of the very best art galleries in the world. To the left, the bus passes Admiralty Arch, through which the mail leads to Buckingham Palace, before leaving Trafalgar Square past Canada House. It then enters Pall Mall, more famous for appearing on a Monopoly board than anything else, before turning by the Guards Crimean War Memorial, which features Florence Nightingale, the lady with the lamp and founder of modern nursing, on its way to Piccadilly Circus. Just past long-established sports store Lily White's, the statue of Eros comes into view. Although known as Eros, it's actually his brother, Antiros. The bus crosses to Regent Street, named after the Prince Regent, who later became George IV. It's one of the major shopping streets in London. The Sting, Peppy Jeans, the Café Royal, Moss Bros, Coach, Austin Reed and Barber feature before the band finishes. Further along, Burberry, The Body Shop, TM Lewin and Mappin and Webb are among the impressive array of retail outlets. Regent Street itself is an early example of town planning. Many properties were knocked down to make way for an avenue to Regent's Park. Designed by John Nash and much changed since, it remains one of London's wider roads. More well-known shops such as Watches of Switzerland, Guess and Ralph Lauren pass by on the way to Hamley's enormous toy store, the oldest in the world. It's a major tourist attraction with about 5 million people passing through its doors each year. After passing even more famous outlets, the bus reaches Oxford Circus, where it turns into Oxford Street, one of the busiest shopping thoroughfares in Europe. The flagship stores of John Lewis, Debenhams and Marks and Spencers are on the right-hand side, as is Selfridges, one of the largest shops in the United Kingdom, and incidentally, the first store to install toilets for women. Although slightly less upmarket than Regent Street, some outlets such as Moss Bros, Swarovski, Omega, H&M, Zara, The Body Shop, Gap and Watches of Switzerland make an appearance in both locations. Many other shops typically found in towns and cities throughout Britain also have a presence. The road continues to Wales, but the bus doesn't, 
the final stop being just before Marble Arch, which was at one time the entrance to Buckingham Palace. Next bus on the route is number 74, with Marble Arch to the right, turn into Park Lane, where the stop is opposite the corner of Hyde Park. On setting off, the bus pass is Aston Martin, a shop selling very expensive cars. In 2004, the decision was taken to build a war memorial for animals. It can be seen on the centre reservation directly opposite. Further along, after affluent Grosvenor House Hotel, Mini Park Lane sells less expensive vehicles and BMW Park Lane completes a trio of car showrooms. There then follows a hotel from the top drawer, the Five Star Dorchester, where back in the annals of history, Prince Philip held his stag party. To see the main entrance, look sharp left at the end of the building. An ornate branch of Barclays lies just across the flower bed, close to where taxi drivers wait to pick up clients, hopefully generous tippers, from nearby hotels. Set a little way back, where the road bends slightly, the Hilton is another hotel offering five-star luxury. To the right, the view of Hyde Park, which runs the full length of Park Lane, is finally interrupted by Apsley House, once known as Number One London. The bus skirts a large roundabout dominated by the Wellington Arch, topped by a winged figure of Nike in a chariot. Maybe not quite so nice, but considered important nonetheless, is a memorial dedicated to First World War casualties of the Royal Regiment of Artillery. After sweeping past the wall of Buckingham Palace towards Hyde Park Corner, the bus turns left into Ninesbridge. I like that the stop immediately it leaves the roundabout, then walk a few metres to the next stop to catch the number 9 bus for the short journey to the Albert Hall. After the buildings along the perimeter of Hyde Park finish, there are two sets of traffic lights. Immediately after the second, just past the statue of David Livingstone recessed in a red brick wall of the Royal Geographical Society building, Get off the bus. The Albert Memorial is clearly visible in the park. The Albert Hall is opposite it. To return to Hyde Park Corner, cross the road, and of course take the number 9 bus, making sure the destination shown on the front is Oldwich. First turning to the right after the statue of David Livingstone is Exhibition Road, home to the Imperial College London, the Science Museum, the Natural History Museum and the Victoria and Albert Museum. To the left, after about 600 metres, the first building of note, One Hyde Park, features among the most expensive residential properties in Britain. Retail outlets on the ground floor include McLaren and Rolex. Knightsbridge Station and Harvey Nichols, the well-regarded luxury department store, are located directly opposite. Next door to One Hyde Park, the five-star Mandarin Oriental Hotel, is followed swiftly by the Kuwaiti and French embassies. Soon after Hyde Park Corner, Apsley House, former home of the Duke of Wellington, is now a museum, where many of the exhibits were acquired as a result of his military campaigns. Opposite, the Duke sits astride his horse, Copenhagen. Before the roundabout was built to relieve traffic congestion, the Wellington Arch was the entrance to Constitution Hill, which runs down between Green Park and the side wall of Buckingham Palace. The bus takes the exit just before it into Piccadilly, where immediately on the right, on the edge of Green Park, the Bomber Command Memorial was unveiled by Queen Elizabeth II in 2012 quite some time after the Second World War ended. Next up is the Hard Rock Cafe, which claims to offer the best authentic American food in London and has a reputedly good collection of rock and roll memorabilia. Then the Sheraton Grand Park Lane Hotel is of course situated in Piccadilly. 
It's said that there are no flowers in Green Park at the behest of Catherine of Braganza, after she discovered her husband, a certain King Charles II, had picked some there for her mistress. Over to the right, Green Park Underground Station is the nearest to Buckingham Palace. It's also the nearest to the Ritz Hotel, situated next door. The bus soon enters St James's Street, where distant St James's Palace was built during the reign of King Henry VIII. Before reaching it, the route passes some of the oldest shops in London, all of which are on the left-hand side. D.R. Harris, just past the first junction, was established in 1790. Further on, James J. Fox is where Winston Churchill used to buy cigars. Then nearer St James's Palace, John Lopp has been maker of bespoke shoes since about 1860. Lock & Co. is where the very first bowler hat was sold. The company was founded in 1676, making it the oldest hat shop in the world. Famous customers have included Lord Horatio Nelson and David Beckham. At the end, just before the corner, wine merchants Berry Brothers and Rudd, who include the royal family among their customers, have been located at the same premises since 1698, which is a long time. After turning past St James's Palace into Pall Mall, the first stop is the nearest any bus tour gets to Buckingham Palace. Some passengers will undoubtedly wish to alight and walk the short distance there. Merely go along Marlborough Road, which is to the side of St James's Palace, then turn right into the Mall. London has a scheme whereby blue plaques are attached to buildings which have an association with a famous person or event. To the right along Pall Mall, one such blue plaque is affixed to a house where Nell Gwynne, mistress of Charles II, lived. And who knows, maybe she was the last recipient of flowers picked in Green Park. Nearby, the Royal Automobile Club is a well-patronised private members club where applications for membership take about a year to process. Successful applicants are then placed on a waiting list. Straight ahead, the Dome of the National Gallery gets ever closer. At the traffic lights, as the route passes the Guards Crimean War Memorial, look quickly right to see the Duke of York Column. The Duke was the second son of King George III and £2 million in debt when he died. Shortly afterwards, the bus veers towards Trafalgar Square, where Nelson's Column, erected in 1843, stands tall behind a statue of Charles James Napier, a career soldier who had a town in New Zealand named after him. Over to the right, the statue of King Charles I on horseback gazes along White Hall where he was executed. At the back of the square, beyond the Fountains and Lions, the National Gallery houses one of the world's best collections of paintings. And in the far corner, busy St Martin's in the Fields Church hosts concerts most days. It's also home to the London Brass Rubbing Centre and a very popular and reasonably priced cafe. The bus enters a strand, passing the South African Embassy, then immediately across the road, Charing Cross Station, which has a replica of Charing Cross in its forecourt. The original, once situated where the statue of King Charles I now stands, was dismantled by Oliver Cromwell, the protector. The Strand itself, which follows the course of the River Thames, was in centuries gone by the main route between the City of London and the monarch's residence at Westminster. To the left, just after the Adelphi and Vaudeville theatres, Stanley Gibbons claims to be the world's largest stamp shop. At the next crossroads, look right to see the Savoy Hotel, the first luxury hotel in Britain which introduced innovations such as constant hot and cold running water and custom-made spring mattresses. Ahead, the spire of St Mary the Strand Church can be seen in the distance. Finally, the bus arcs up into Oldwich where its journey ends. Before walking back to nearby Stop D to board the number 15 bus, consider taking a look around. Opposite the nearby Waldorf Hilton Hotel, 
The steps beside the Indian Embassy lead down to King's College, Somerset House, the Courtauld Gallery and St Mary Le Strand Church, while Covent Garden is in the opposite direction. Make sure the destination shown on the front of the next bus is Blackwall. To the right, soon after setting off, it passes Bush House, formerly headquarters of the BBC's World Service, and now a branch of King's College, London. Then the Australian Embassy is followed swiftly by St Clement Danes Church. Destroyed by a bombing raid in 1940, it was rebuilt to become the central church of Britain's Royal Air Force. To the left, the gothically styled Royal Courts of Justice, opened by Queen Victoria in 1882, is just over the pedestrian crossing from Twinings, Britain's first tea room which opened in 1706. In 1878, the Temple Bar Memorial in the centre of the road replaced the western gate to the city, which is now located at an entrance to Paternoster Square, close to St Paul's Cathedral. Nearby Child and Co's Bank dates from the late 17th century. A little further, below Prince Henry's room, which somehow managed to avoid destruction in the Great Fire of 1666, the gate leads to the Middle and Inner Temples, originally occupied by the Knights Templar. The church in the ground dates from 1185. Next, Horse Bank is the fourth oldest in the world. Past clients include Catherine of Braganza, wife of Charles II, Samuel Pepys, Lord Byron and Jane Austen. The clock of St Dunstan in the west, the church opposite, which dates from 1671, was the first public clock in London to have a minute hand. Next to it, and set back a little way, the statue of Queen Elizabeth I, made during her lifetime, is the oldest outdoor statue in London. Sweeney Todd's victims are said to have been murdered at the premises next door. They subsequently became the filling for meat pies sold at a shop across the road. About 200 metres further, still on the left-hand side, look out for the sign of the Old Cheshire Cheese Public House. Situated along a narrow passage, past customers include literary notables such as Charles Dickens, Mark Twain, Arthur Conan Doyle, G.K. Chesterton, P.G. Wodehouse and Alfred Tennyson. Then almost immediately at first floor level is a smallish statue of Mary Queen of Scots, cousin of Queen Elizabeth I. Despite family ties, it was Elizabeth who signed the warrant for Mary's execution. The Column Daily Telegraph building is swiftly followed by the Black Daily Express building. They date from the time when most of Britain's newspapers were produced in Fleet Street, but no more. Along the narrow pedestrianised road immediately opposite the Daily Express building, it's possible to catch a quick glimpse of St Bride's Church, the steeple of which is said to be an inspiration behind wedding cake design. For an arguably better view, look back after the next set of traffic lights. In 1667, Sir Christopher Wren built nearby Ye Old Bell Tavern for the benefit of his workers building the church. When crossing the traffic lights, look left to see the Hoban Viaduct in the distance. The River Fleet, which runs beneath it, has been diverted underground. Don't forget to look back at St Bride's Church steeple. The route continues along Ludgate Hill towards St Paul's Cathedral, where it's possible to climb to the top of the dome. Fairly expensive and over 500 steps, but the views are okay. Consider leaving the bus here to take a look round. A statue of Queen Anne stands in the front of the cathedral. To the left, the Temple Bar Gate, which once stood at the other end of Fleet Street near the Royal Courts of Justice, leads to Paternoster Square and the London Stock Exchange building. To the right across the road, past the well-regarded Salvation Army Cafe 101 along St Peter's Hill, on the way to the Millennium Bridge. The Tate Modern Art Gallery, formerly a power station, is just over the river. Continuing on the bus, look sharp left at the second set of traffic lights to see St Mary Aldermary Church, 
which is situated on the corner of Watling Street, one of England's major roads in Roman times. The route then passes Cannon Street Station, from where mainline trains serve the southeast of England. At the next major road junction, look right to see London Bridge. Then look down the next road to the right to see the monument, built to commemorate the Great Fire of 1666. Then next right is Pudding Lane, where the fire started. Along East Cheap, the bus passes close to the Walkie Talkie, which can actually be better appreciated if viewed from further away. Ahead, the spire of All Hallows by the Tower Church comes into view, then immediately behind it, the Tower of London. All Hallows, still with a Saxon arch, is one of the oldest churches in London. John Quincy Adams, 6th United States President, was married there. William Penn, founder of Pennsylvania, was baptised there. Historic Tower of London partially obscures equally famous Tower Bridge. Tower Hill, the grassy area to the left and across from the tower, is one of three hills in the city of London and formerly a place of execution. Some were hanged and others beheaded. A little further on, part of the old city wall, first built by the Romans around the end of the second century, is still standing. Around the next corner, the bus passes Tower Gateway, from where the Docklands Light Railway takes visitors to Greenwich, one of London's World Heritage Sites. Under the bridge it turns right, then left, and at Whitechapel High Street, right again. A light at the first stop after Oldgate East Underground Station. Greenwich makes for a pleasant excursion. The old Royal Naval College, designed by Christopher Wren, is free to enter. The Queen's House, designed by Enigo Jones, was completed in 1635. The Queen was Anne of Denmark, wife of James I. Again, entry is free. There's also no charge to enter the National Maritime Museum, the largest of its kind in the United Kingdom. A walk up the hill to the Royal Observatory is rewarded by some rather nice views over London. For keen choppers, there are a couple of fairly decent markets, while well, gastronomes may be interested in visiting one of the few remaining restaurants selling pie and mash, once a staple meal of London's East End. Riverside by the jetty, the famous Cutty Sark was built specifically to bring tea from China. As well as the Docklands Light Railway, it's also possible to visit Greenwich by taking a boat along the River Thames. Back to our bus tour, soon after Oldgate East Underground Station, the bus makes a right turn. A light at the stop about 20 metres along it, then walk back to just beyond the station entrance for the number 25 bus. Almost immediately it passes St Botolph without Oldgate Church, before forking into Leadenhall Street at the Oldgate Pump, which is said to be where the East End of London begins. To the right, the Tower of St Catherine Cray Church dates from about 1500. The rest of it was constructed as recently as 1628. Soon after, St Andrew's Undershaft Church, built in 1532, is nestled among the high-rise buildings of the financial district. The Gherkin, Cheese Grater and Silver Lloyds building, with its lifts and ducts on the outside, loom large by comparison. Ahead to the left, it's just possible to glimpse the spire of St Peter upon Cornhill Church. The tower of St Michael Cornhill Church behind it stands at the pavement's edge, so it can be seen more clearly after the next crossroads, the highest point in the city of London. When the bus reaches the bottom of Cornhill, look sharp right to see the Royal Exchange. Opened by Queen Elizabeth I, it is now a covered courtyard with shops and restaurants. Beyond it, the Bank of England, lacking windows at street level, dates from 1734. The equestrian statues of the Duke of Wellington. Sharp left, St Mary Woolnoth Church is situated directly above Bank Station. 
Then behind the column-fronted mansion house, official residence of the Lord Mayor of London, Don St Stephen Walbrook Church was built by Sir Christopher Wren prior to his masterpiece at St Paul's Cathedral. Given all there is to see here, passengers wishing to explore the area on foot should alight at the first stop after Mansion House. The bus continues along Cheapside past Mary Lebeau Church. It's said that those born within the sound of its bells can claim to be true cockneys. The popular cafe below the church also serves takeaway meals. In medieval England, the word cheap signified a market, and roads running from Cheapside, such as Ironmonger Lane, Milk Street, Bread Street, Wood Street and Honey Lane, still bear the names of goods sold. After bending around the side of St Paul's Cathedral, the route passes Christchurch Greyfriars Church, which was ruined by bombs during the Second World War. The viaduct tavern on the right-hand corner at the next set of traffic lights is rumoured to be haunted. To the left, the Central Criminal Court, better known as the Old Bailey, sits on the former site of Newgate Prison. And across the junction, St Sepulchre's Church still houses the execution bell, which was rung the night before one of the inmates was put to death. Further along, the bus crosses between the statues and red ironwork balustrades of Hoban Viaduct, built to span the River Fleet Valley in 1869. It then passes St Andrew's Hoban Church towards an equestrian statue of Prince Albert, husband of Queen Victoria, in the centre of the road. Heading away from the statue to the right, Hatton Garden has a strong association with London's jewellery trade. The Red Terracotta Prudential Building, built not surprisingly for the Prudential Assurance Company, faces the timber-framed facade of Staple Inn, formerly a place where wool was weighed and taxed, which dates from 1585. Beyond the Royal Fusiliers Memorial in the centre of the road, the City of York pub, despite quaint spelling, was actually constructed during the 1920s. About 300 metres later, the bus passes Hoban Underground Station, then immediately crosses Kingsway. To the left before the station, but unfortunately completely hidden by buildings, Lincoln's Inn Fields, a pleasant park where executions once took place, is home to the Macabre Hunterian Museum and Sir John Soane's Museum, which is especially popular on the occasional evenings when illuminated by candlelight. A hundred metres after Kingsway, the bus bears right at a fork in the road. A light at the next stop. Walk back taking the left fork to find a stop for the number 38 bus opposite St George's Bloomsbury Church. Just before the church, Museum Street leads to the British Museum. Board bus number 38 after making sure the destination shown on the front is Victoria. It soon turns past Bloomsbury Central Baptist Church towards the Shaftesbury Theatre. To the right, beyond the colourful buildings of Central St Giles, it's just possible to glimpse the steeple of St Giles in the Fields Church. After negotiating the junction, the bus enters Shaftesbury Avenue. Named after the 7th Earl of Shaftesbury, it was built in the latter years of the 19th century to divert traffic away from central London. On the left-hand side, after about 100 metres, the first building of note is the Chinese church in London, indicating that Chinatown is not too far away. Services are conducted in both Mandarin and Cantonese. The Odeon across the road became a cinema in 1970. Externally, the building has changed little in appearance since it first opened as a Savile Theatre some 40 years earlier. For anybody interested, the frieze represents drama through the ages. Then at Cambridge Circus, where Shaftesbury Avenue meets Charing Cross Road, the imposing Palace Theatre began life as the Royal English Opera House. 
To the right of it, the Cambridge Public House has been a favourite with actors and theatre goers, enticed by the quality of menu and drinks list there, since the end of the 19th century. A little further along the route, the turning past the fire station leads to Chinatown, where shop signs display Chinese text and street signs follow suit. Variety of choice at the Curzon Cinema opposite, which includes a fair percentage of independent movies and documentaries, attracts aficionados looking for something a little bit out of the ordinary. The Queen's Theatre is then followed quickly by the Gilgood Theatre, originally known as the Globe, its name changed in 1994 when Shakespeare's Globe was re-established across the Thames. Close by, the Apollo Theatre, once owned by Andrew Lloyd Webber, is next door to the Lyric Theatre, opened in 1888 and the oldest in Shaftesbury Avenue. The concrete columns to the right as the bus approaches Piccadilly Circus feature in Harry Potter's Deathly Hallows movie. Eros, straight ahead, was the first statue in the world to be cast in aluminium. Its official name is the Shaftesbury Memorial Fountain, though not too much water flows these days. Beyond it, Lily White's has been selling sports goods since 1925. The bus crosses Regent Street into Piccadilly, where to the left busy St James's Church holds an outdoor market most days and also hosts frequent concerts. Mostly classical, although there is variation such as the time when REM made an appearance. It's not known if their set included Losing My Religion. Church-like activities include a counselling service and provision of hot meals and accommodation for the homeless during winter. Next look for the clock on the wall outside Fortnum and Mason, an upmarket department store which opened in 1707. It has a good reputation, not least because the Queen goes there. Opposite, the Royal Academy of Arts hosts numerous exhibitions, almost all of which receive excellent reviews. It's immediately followed by the extremely upmarket and elegant Burlington Arcade, where Beatles patrol to enforce quaint rules such as no hurrying, no humming, and definitely no boisterous behaviour. The next turning is Old Bond Street. Running all the way to Oxford Street, it claims to have the highest density of high-class fashion stores in the world. To the left, the bus passes the famous Ritz Hotel. Immediately after, Green Park Station is just a short stroll through the trees away from Buckingham Palace. London Cycle Hire Scheme has over 750 docking stations, like the one next to the station entrance. It's popular except maybe on rainy days, and can be an inexpensive way to travel around the city. Across the road, the bus passes Clarges Street, home to the Kennel Club, Half Moon Street, home to yet another Hilton Hotel, and opposite the Devonshire Gates, once the entrance to a rather grand townhouse, White Horse Street, which meanders as it follows the course of the now subterranean Tyburn River. Further along, the Sheraton Grand Park Lane, another luxury hotel, is followed by the Hard Rock Cafe, a restaurant specialising in American cuisine. At the end of Piccadilly, a memorial to Bomber Command stands at the edge of Green Park. Built to commemorate victory in the Napoleonic Wars, the Wellington Arch is centrepiece of the roundabout ahead. Nearby, an equestrian statue of the Duke of Wellington faces Apsley House, where he lived. The large gun of a memorial dedicated to casualties of the Royal Regiment of Artillery during the First World War points towards Grosvenor Place, where this tour follows the rear wall of Buckingham Palace. Soon after, it reaches the terminus at Victoria, where there are connections to both underground and mainline rail services, and, of course, the next bus on our route. Cross the road by the Shakespeare pub, where the number 11 stops close to a statue of Marshal Falk on horseback. 
bought for the short journey to Parliament Square. The one-way system creates a circuitous route to Victoria Street, where little Ben, a clock always set to British summer time, confuses the uninformed in winter after the clocks go back. Quickly passing to the right, mosque-like Westminster Cathedral, set some way back from the road, was built on the site of a former prison. Mainly for economic reasons, the interior decoration has never been completed. After continuing between modern glassy buildings, the bus soon approaches Westminster Abbey. The twin towers were added when the abbey itself was more than 600 years old. A little before it on the right, Westminster Scholars' War Memorial was erected outside Dean's Yard in 1861. On entering Parliament Square, the Houses of Parliament ahead are impossible to miss. Look left to see the Supreme Court situated directly opposite them. At the next stop, a short distance along White Hall, leave the bus. The 159 bus, which was the first on this tour, leaves from the same stop. Passengers may enjoy exploring this area on foot. St Margaret's Church, where Winston Churchill was married, the Houses of Parliament and Westminster Abbey constitute a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The 14th century Jewel Tower and St James's Park are within easy walking distance. Just beyond Big Ben, river buses run from Westminster Pier all the way to Greenwich, another World Heritage Site, with many stops along the route.